Hello, welcome to the program. Ahead, APN to take control of its radio businesses as it's hiring of Kyle and Jackie O, her rival Southern Cross Media. Fairfax shares jump on its first half profit, even as the latest circulation results proved grim reading for major publishers. And Fox Sports launches its winter programming lineup. CEO Patrick Delaney will be joining us with all the details coming up. But first, as Seven West Media was delivering its first half results this week, Australian Federal Police began dramatic raids on the company's offices nearby, investigating its dealings with Chappelle Corby, the search relating to the Proceeds of Crime Act, which prevents a person profiting from a crime. Seven says it has not paid the convicted drug trafficker for an interview. Well, let's get the details with our co-host, James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week. James, you were there in the results briefing while all of this uh, started, the raids began. Just yeah, there was no real happened. indication of the, during the briefing. I mean, Bruce McWilliam wasn't there and he often is, so that should have maybe set off us a minor alarm. A um, few flurry of phone calls in the background, stuff was going on. So you sort of got the feeling that maybe there was something back at HQ, but uh, leaving the actual results uh, briefing, there was, you know, a, a big media packet formed outside this, outside of Seven, so it was obviously something going on. But yeah, an incredible week, you know, raids on uh, Seven headquarters, the Sunday night offices, the Pacific magazines, as you said, all related to the Chappelle Corby payment. Um, or if there was one, there hasn't been one yet. Seven say, and Tim Warner said, look, all this was just an unnecessary show of force, an unnecessary waste of, of funds. You know, we've been dealing with the uh, Federal Police for some time, and this could have been sorted out by a simple email. Um, but at the same time, Mike Willisey in uh, Bali still seems to be soldiering on trying to get that interview. You know, Seven, if anything, seem to have strengthened their resolve wanting to get that interview, you know, and when you tell people they shouldn't be doing something, they often think, well, look, we'll show you, we'll go ahead with it. So they do seem to want that interview pretty badly. We will watch and wait. Uh, Seven's result itself and, and the outlook, what, what did they have to say there? Yeah, look, um, sort of business as usual for them, you know, they, the last half of um, 2013 was, was, you know, they were off a little bit, but they said, look, Nine did well because they had two Ashes series, you know, the, the Australian visit to England and the England team came out here, so that did help the nine result. But Seven said, look, we're on track. I think their, their ad share for the whole year was still above 40%. That's their target for this year too, so they seem pretty confident of uh, doing that. The outlook is for, you know, small, small growth perhaps still in that, that free-to-air TV space. Big challenges still in the magazines, but they think they're, you know, think they're in a good place and with people who are still buying magazines, they've got a, a, a lot of that uh, custom. Well, let's turn to Fairfax's result and Fairfax Media shares surging after its underlying first half profit jumped 48%. Well, here's what the CEO, Greg Highwood, had to say about the turnaround at the Metro Media newspaper division. In our publishing businesses, the impact of cost reduction is either substantially offsetting... Apologies, we will try to uh, bring that to you. All right, James, uh, let's get your thoughts on the Fairfax result. Uh, obviously, Greg Highwood saying that this has been underpinned by that turnaround at the, the Metro Media Division. What, what did you think of that? Well, I think it's, it's a good result. You know, it's hard to, hard to fault the, the work he's been doing there to, you know, turn it turn the place around. You know, they're still in business when, you know, as we've often talked on the show a few years ago, people were thinking, look, it'll be all over by now for Fairfax, but they're still making money, you know. There's still some massive challenges challenges ahead and he's not pretending there's not a lot of work to do but you know they they are addressing the challenges as, as possibly as best they can uh, their best um, was it he said their first year on year um, increase in earnings with uh, continuing businesses since uh, 2010 so it's a, it's not a bad bad thing yeah, absolutely, and the market loves it. Uh, we'll get the market reaction more on that in just a moment, but I just wanted to ask you too, because there's a bit of history being made as well uh, this coming weekend, the last broadsheet editions of The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald. Yeah, look, the you know, the... the Weekday editions uh, changed a year ago, went to the new compact format, but they kept the Saturday papers there. I mean, not much of the Saturday papers still actually in the uh, broadsheet. All the other sections are wrapped into it, but, you know, there'll be a bit of history being made with the last one coming out. Collector's item variety this weekend. It'll be interesting to see if any advertisers take advantage of it because, you know, you, could, you can make a lot of noise about your brand if you wanted to take that, that last big available page. But um, the Australian might be saying at the same time, look, it's no big deal. We're still this size. So if you... If you want that big impact, you, you know where to go. All right. Well, let's go back to the result now and get some thoughts on it from uh, Evan Lucas, uh, IG market strategist. Evan, uh, just in, on the Fairfax, Fairfax result, I mean, investors really loving the result today. 
Yeah, there's two parts to it, Brian. And listening to what James just said there, he's absolutely correct. They've actually probably stemmed the flow, and that's probably the, the best way to have a look at what's coming out of Fairfax, particularly the Australian publishing arm. It actually managed to go up by 3.5% on that EBITDA line, so the earnings line. That was a lot better than the market expected. Most analysts had expected to actually contract. They also saw their sales slightly down on last year, but again, ahead of consensus. And then a really, really big beat on the NPAT line, coming in at around about, uh, what, uh, I think it was something around about $86 million. So that was a big beat. Most people had expected between sort of 50 and 60. So that's where it all came about. It is actually seeing a turnaround in costs. So costs have been coming down. They've certainly looked at finally stripping out all of the assets. All of that has helped actually Fairfax jump up 14 cents. And that is a very good move indeed. Partly because also it is one of the most shorted stocks on the market, and there's a there's a big unwind there. But it has been a good result for, for Fairfax because they have shown that they are actually turning the business around. It's been a very very horrible story for a while, and this is finally it's not good news, but it's okay news that shows we are actually finally getting our act together, and and that's certainly coming through the Australian division in, in particularly. Uh, Seek was another big performer uh, of media companies with its numbers this week. Well, news of an acquisition too as well. I mean, what was it in particular that drove Seek shares up? Yeah, look, Seek shares, what a fantastic story Seek shares have been. They're up 22% on the results and they were stellar results. It's the only way I can sort of describe them. Sales up to $337 million. That was ahead of consensus. It was a double-digit move on last year. NPAT coming in at $86.3 million and that was 25%. Uh, on consensus and around about the same amount on this time last year. Cash flow is amazingly good. They're also seeing very, very strong movements on their earning lines, particularly in the employment sales. Despite the fact that the employment market's been sort of soft, it was up 2.5%. Learning was an amazing number, so their education arm up 26%. And all of that boils back into the acquisitions that are sort of suggested. There is more looking in Canada, more people looking into, into the US as well. And that's where they've seen a huge number. The Latin American numbers were really strong, up 7%. So Seek has huge amount of organic growth coming. Domestic demand looks very strong, but the international and emerging markets are looking even better. It's really exciting investors and they are doing incredibly well. As I said, up 22% since the results and watching Seek very closely. Just very quickly, it's Nine's first day on the ASX 200. How's it faring? Yeah, look, interesting in terms of what's happened. The volume is certainly there, as you'd expect. When you do list, you get the industry, uh, the providers obviously picking it up because they have to. But it hasn't been a huge move on their, share, on their share price. And I think that's because people are now waiting for the numbers to come. They are expecting really, really good revenue numbers, considering the strong sort of viewership they had over summer. So not a huge share price mover, but certainly the volume is there. And it does just reinforce that Nine is certainly going to be a force to watch over the next couple of years as they really bed themselves into the market. Evan, as always, thank you. Thanks, guys. Evan Luke is there from IG. Let's turn to APN News and Media. It unveiled a deal that could be transformative for the company, taking full control of ARN and the radio network for $246 million. Let's return to MediaWeek's James Manning uh, with more on this. So buying out Clear Channel's share of those uh, radio operations. So what does this mean for their competitors and just how crucial has that investment in Kiss and Kyle and Jackie O been for them? Yeah, well, it really um, puts the spotlight that, on that this year because, you know, that uh, massive in um, vote of confidence in the existing Australian radio network um, management. Uh, so there's no no mixed board to report to before. It's all it's all local. So it's um, you know, and that uh, big investment in that new talent, the first ratings out in uh, two and a half weeks, be really looked at very closely. And everybody's talking about look, don't read too much into it, but uh, it's going to be important. Um, Kieran Davis has talked. The um, CEO at the radio has talked about look, we could have the number one and two. Um, breakfast shows in the Sydney market this year, so they'll be certainly looking that uh, they get something close to that at least. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's just turn now to rival Southern Cross Media and its results. The company, of course, saw those breakfast FM stars Kyle and Jackie O leave to join ARN during the half. Well, here's what CEO Rhys Holleran had to say in an interview with Media Week's James Manning about how he's been watering down expectations for the first radio rating survey due out soon. It, it takes a while to build shows where people make a daily appointment with, it becomes part of their lives. The great strength of, of the radio business is the emotional connection it makes with its audience. You, you just can't wake up one morning and make a new emotional connection like that instantaneously. It's unrealistic to think that. So I'm not sure whether we're watering down, but what we're trying to do is better explain what our position was. So. The report card on March 11th doesn't become the last word on this issue. It's actually the first. 
Right, let's get James's view further on this. Obviously, you were speaking with uh, Rhys Holler and after the results there, and, and, and a warning to the market, look, just don't judge us on that first survey result. Yeah, they've been very careful to say that, and they said that all through their, um, their roadshow earlier this year, their sort of upfronts, if you like. They said, and they showed up the charts of how long it took uh, Kyle and Jackie O to get to, you know, number one when they went to breakfast, and, and just, just really, you know, not warning, but just making it, uh, people aware that these things don't happen overnight. And he also spoke about the unprecedented, he calls it unprecedented spending in uh, marketing of the uh, of breakfast shows at the moment. Um, I think their um, shares were sort of beat up reasonably badly on the market uh, the day of the release. And I don't think it was so much their, their last half of... Um, 2013. I think it was probably because people worried about the future, perhaps, and that that future um, competition and how that might affect uh, their business going forward. Now, the stocks really suffered after the result. I mean, is it, you know, more about those future concerns rather than the actual? Well, I think results? it is. Yeah, it's just more about those future concerns. And he said, look, we're spending so much, and you sort of wonder, well, gee, are they they top ending the year down here? Will they have maybe not a lot to spend later in the year, or they have to, you know, go into some. Um, some spend some more money than they had perhaps planned to if it doesn't doesn't uh, roll out as they wanted. But you know, people in radio often don't spend straight away when you've got new shows. You give them time to bed in, um, build some connection with an audience, and then go out promote it when you think the product's just right. Uh, that hasn't happened this time because of the competitive state of the market. People are spending the money straight away, um, and some of those shows are still developing on air. You know, like the new Today FM breakfast show. Though the guys will tell you on air, Jules Lund will say, "Look, we're." A, you know, every day we get a little bit better. So, you know, people are tuning in and hearing the product gradually. Um, will they stay with it during that uh, growth? Remains to be seen. James, lots more to ask you about. We're just taking a quick break here on Media Week. Coming up, Fox Sports CEO Patrick Delaney joins us to bring us up to date on the winter program highlights.